Hey guys, welcome to the uh, level two probability paper from 2020. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, the way this video works is that I go through each question and let you guys know what you need to do for achieved merit and excellence. Uh, the best way to watch this video is to pause the video at the start of each question. Try the question out by yourself and then unpause the video just to see how I go about answering the question. Now I'm sure I'm going to be making a few mistakes here and there, so if you do pick up anything, write in the comment section below and we can go from there. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. All right, folks, I do apologize in advance if uh, on the odd occasion you hear a fireworks going off. It is late in the night. I'm kind of hoping it wouldn't but this is what we're dealing with. Okay, so let's actually get started with this question. Uh, question one, what we've got here is, um, probably wanna start off with a probability tree because um, they have given us a little bit of space to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I've got staff that are 15% and then students are going to be 0 0.85. 90% of the staff drove to university, so D, and then not drive, so that's 0 0.9 and 0 0.1. And as for the students, 43% drove to the to university, and then 57% didn't drive to the university. Now, one other thing that it says is of the students who drove to university, 36% they would like to own an EV, so that's going to be 0 0.36 and this is no EV which is going to be 0 0.64 and then for those 60% of the students who did not drive to university said would like to own an EV so that's 0 0.6 and then we've got 0 0.4 uh, with no EV so what I've what I've really done here is just kind of draw this diagram first. This is all the information that I've been given, um, and I'm guessing this will actually help me with um, moving forward with this question. So that moves us to the uh, first question, first part of this question, where we're looking for find the probability that a chosen random blah, blah, staff member and also drove to university. So staff member and drove to university is along this branch here. So probability of staff and drove equals 0 0.15 times 0 0.9, which equals to 0 0.135. Now this question is actually worth an achieved. So a nice quick question to start off with. Then we're going to go to a uh, second part of this question. So part two of the question here, what we've got here, again, you guys will notice that I'm just copying the probability tree uh, and just kind of restarting that same probability tree for every one of these different questions. So for you, it'll be a really good idea to have that probability tree drawn right at the beginning. So we're looking at a student that has not driven to university and would not like to own an EV. So first off, we've got student, which is along here. Uh, next we go, did not, did not drive to university, which is gonna be along this branch here. And finally, we have would not like to own an EV. So probability of student and uh, not driving and uh, no no EV so that's going to be 0 0.85 multiplied by 0 0.57 multiplied by 0 0.4 so putting that in the calculator which gives us 0 0.1938 and the grade for this question also happens to be achieved. All right, so next question. Uh, here we go. Right, so with this question, what we've got is if a student respondent. Now, it's really important that uh, they've actually put that 
student in capital letters there. So we know that um, we're going to be looking at this part of the branch uh, branches because we already know that this is going to be a student respondent. Uh, and it says that if they would like to own an EV. So if you look at what's the probability they'd like to own an EV, that is basically these two yellow lines. And finally, uh, they look at what is the probability that they drove to university. Now, they drove to university uh, given that they'd like to own an EV. Now, that is this branch here. So, first off, we're going to work out what's the probability of EV. So, that's going to be 0 0.43 times 0 0.36. That's the first yellow line plus. 0 0.57 times 0 0.6 which is the second yellow line so we've got 0. Point, sorry 0 0.43 multiplied by 0 0.36 plus 0 0.57 times 0 0.6 and that's going to give me 4968 now as for the probability that they drove and would like an EV is going to be 0 0.43 multiplied by 0 0.36 43 times 0 0.36 is equal to 1548 so this is just a conditional probability um, so we've actually got finally probability of um, the student driving uh, if they if they want an EV so that's going to be the 0 0.1548 which is drive and wanting an EV divided by the probability of all the students that actually want to own an EV so we've got 0 0.5148 divided by 0 0.4968 and that's going to give us 0 0.3116 and grades wise correct or consistent probability is going to get you a merit either numerator or denominator correctly found is an achieved so you could get an achieved for this or getting this probability either of these two probabilities correct all right next question so for part four of this question, once again, we're going to use that same probability tree. And what we have is this time we're looking at the staff there. And it says 52% of the staff who drove to um, university would like to own an EV, which means 0 0.48. Doesn't want a bar of EV. And then it says only a quarter of the staff who didn't drive to university uh, would like an EV. So we've got two more branches coming up. That's EV and not EV but this time it's 0.25 because it's a quarter and 0 0.5 is that part there so um, just to kind of reiterate the 52 percent is right there and the one quarter of the staff uh, that's there for um, owning an EV now the question is asking what percentage of all survey respondents would like to own an EV so basically that is every branch that we're looking at here so that's going to be blue branch there which has an EV then we've got the yellow branch with another EV then we have the pink branch here with an EV and then we could have an orange branch here with an EV so that's if you multiply all those probabilities and add them up you're going to get probability of wanting EV so what I want to do is probability of EV is equal to I'm just gonna put it here 0 0.15 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.52 plus 0 0.15 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.25 plus 0 0.85 times 0 0.43 times 0 0.36 plus 0 0.85 times 0 0.57 times 0 0.6 so putting that I'm gonna get probability of someone wanting to own an EV is this exceptionally long and winded
probability that I've got to work out 0 0.15, 0 0.9 times 0 0.52 plus 0.15 times 0.1 times 0.25, looking good so far. 0.85 times 0.43 times 0.36 plus 0.85 times 0.57 times 0.6. God. And I think I might have actually made something wrong here. Let me just check my working. Yep, I can see where the mistake is. Right at the beginning. See, I think this is why I would actually write the working down. Because... I think I saw the mistake. That should be 5 2. 4 9 6 2. That's a lot better. 0 0.49623. So, as a percentage of all survey, uh, I would actually say it's about 49.6%. So uh, grades wise, we are looking for correct or consistent probability, consistent probability, all four added. So, you know, I think even though I made a minor mistake there because I've shown all the working, I could potentially get a merit. I would like to think that, but um, except working on the tree is fine as well. So this final answer is going to get you a merit. One new probability found is an achieved. So that's those, when they say one new probability found, they're talking about I'm wondering whether they're talking about these two probabilities because if that's two of those probabilities that's one of the probably the easiest achieve you're gonna see in this paper unless they're talking about this as your achieved I'm not sure I'm not sure um, but I, like I said I mean if you're aiming for the square uh, question you probably should be getting an emerit because all you're really doing is just adding up those four probabilities together Okay, uh, next question. Okay, so we've got a couple of things happening in this question here. So first off, um, we're working with a new probability tree. We've got 40% of the staff that um, 72 responded close to the university. So we're going to fill up these branches here first, which is 0 0.6 and 0 0.28. Now, the next thing is it says that blah, 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 Tia told both staff and live close to the university are twice as likely. Okay, so twice as likely who do not live close. So once again, we're going to have EV and no EV. EV and no EV. Now here comes the the part, right? It actually says um, for both staff and students who live close to the university are twice as likely. So if this is, um, think about it like this. Uh, this is going to be twice as likely for who do not live close. Now we don't know what this question mark probability is, but what we do know is that the other one is going to be two times whatever that probability is. So what we're going what we're going to do is we're going to call this x and because it's twice as likely this would become 2x but that's for the staff now for the students again we we can't actually say it's x because for the students it might be a different probability but it's still going to be twice as likely which means whatever this probability is for not close so let's say we call it y then the other branch is actually going to be 2y because it's twice as likely. So that's the first part of just setting up our, um, what do you call it, probability tree. Now, the next part it says uh, Tia has actually calculated that overall 49% of the staff who would like to own an EV, um, regardless of whether they drive to uni or not. So if you look at that, if you look at the actual staff that want to own the EV, we've actually got 49% of it. So that means it's basically this branch plus this branch is equal to 0.49. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I've got 0 0.40 multiplied by 2x plus 0 0.60 times x is equal to 
0 0.49 because 49 is I mean obviously 49 percent so we've got 0 0.8x plus 0 0.6x equals 0 0.49 we're gonna get 1.4x is equal to 0 0.49 and then x is equal to 0 0.49 divided by 1.4 so 1.4 divided by yeah, 1.4 divided by no sorry 49 divided by 1.4 is equal to 0 0.35 now the second part of it is 43 percent of the students and that goes would like to own a ev as well and so that part is going to be these two branches they're going to multiply, uh, add up to multiply first and then add up to 0.43. So for that one, we're going to get uh, 0 0.72 times 2y plus 0 0.28 times y is equal to 0 0.43. So 0 0.72 times 2 is going to be 1.44y plus 0 0.28 to 8y equals 0 0.43 so we're gonna get 1.7 oh god shouldn't do this this late in the night time 1.44 plus 0.28 that's 1.72y equals 0 0.43 and then y is equal to 0 0.43 divided by 1.72 that's going to give me y is equal to 0 0.25. So what we've figured out right now is we've actually figured out what the probability is. But if you look at the actual question, find out how much more likely it is for a randomly chosen person who lives close to university and wants an EV. So that's basically going to be that branch there. Then who does not? Okay. So let me just rejig the highlighters. Now, one kind of mistake that I kind of made was I should have actually kind of defined this. Um, this is for um, staff wanting EV, and then this is for students wanting EV. So now, if I look at this question here, it actually says um, Brandon who lives close by to the university. So. I actually need uh, the probability of uh, wanting EV um, if not close. So I've got to do that first. So for that one, what I have is probability of staff and not close wanting EV plus probability of student not close and wanting EV so the branches we're gonna get uh, what is it so this is gonna be I'm gonna have to kind of do a few things here so we're gonna have the pink branch here which is staff not close and wanting an EV then we have the orange branch which is probability of student not close and wanting an ev so in this case we've got 0 0.15 multiplied by 0 0.6 multiplied by x which happens to be 0 0.35 So next I have the orange branch, which is going to be 0 0.85 multiplied by 0 0.28 multiplied by y, which happens to be 0 0.25. So let's actually work this out in the calculator. So we've got 0 0.15 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.35 plus 0 0.85, 0 0.28 and 0.25. Okay, so this is going to give me a probability of 0 0.091. So what I've right now I've calculated is EV if not close. So this is uh, who wants to own an EV and who does not live close. The next one I need to work at it is like 
for someone uh, that wants an EV who lives close. So then I would have to go probability of EV if close. And I've got to kind of uh, create a new I'm sorry folks I think I'll have to get rid of these uh, purple lines here and the orange one so that was for the previous question so probability for EV if close is going to be staff close and wanting EV plus probability of student close and wanting an EV don't think I have any other colors do I I haven't used green in this okay let's use the green one so staff close and EV is going to be along there I don't think I've used the red one student close and EV so student close and EV whoa maybe I need to be a bit careful with this one so I'm trying to do it that way all right, so staff close and EV, what we've got is 0 0.15 multiplied by 0 0.4 multiplied by 2x, which is 0 0.7, plus student, which is 0 0.85 times 0 0.72 times 2y, which is 0 0.5. Okay, so let's actually work out this probability. So we've got 0 0.15 multiplied by 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.7 plus 0.85 times 0.72 times 0.5 and that's going to give me a probability of 0 0.348 okay now the question is actually asking find out find out how much more likely it is for a uh, random chosen respondent who lives close to university and wants to own an EV so that means we're just going to do a um, a quick relative risk there but I mean really all we're doing is just putting those two probabilities on top of each other because um, if we take probability of wanting an EV close which equals to 0 0.348 divided by probability of EV not close which is equal to 0 0.091 so 0 0.34 8 oh, not typing in the wrong calculator uh, sorry 0 0.348 divided by 0 0.091 and that's going to give me uh, 3.824 uh, so I could actually write a statement saying probability of people let me just write this out first so like I said before, I mean, all we're doing is this. I mean, we're trying to figure out how much more likely it is. So we're just going to rewrite that whole um, question right at the end. Just rewrite it and just say probability of people uh, who live close to university and want to own an EV uh, is 0 0 0.348. And then that's 3.8 times more because remember that we got this right there for the 3.8 times more likely than the probability of people wanting to own an EV if not living close. Again, I'm putting those values down um, just because it's just a good habit to not just write like a statement quite bland, but actually giving your numerical um, evidence along with it as well. Okay, so grades wise, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, first off, tree diagram set up correctly with X2, XY. Just that part there is going to get you an achieved. Uh, correct answer only also gets you an achieved so any one of these doing this or doing this gets you an achieved oh that's only for correct answer sorry but if you show the working then this actually is a merit uh, T1 using relative like a simple difference of interpretation okay cool so E7 is e8 is actually here e7 is x and y probabilities found oh sorry okay 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 as i said to you there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack in this question now if you find both of these values 
you actually get a E7 um, but if you find just one of those values so one value is going to get you a merit whether it's X or Y is going to get you a merit but if you find both values you're going to get E7 and then E8 is there at the end when you write that final statement right that is question one all right folks now with question two um, we've got normal distribution so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a quick little diagram here it says the mean is 165 and we're trying to figure out between 150 and 165 and of course the mean is 165 and the standard deviation is 14 now I would always suggest you guys to do this you know like look I would actually just do a quick um, Z value almost but then for achieved questions really um, they're not worried too much about Z values but I would kind of put that through anyway uh, but anyway let, let's actually go through this so we're gonna go into menu go into stat mode distribution normal we've got NCD lower is 150 upper is 165 standard deviation is 14 minus 165 and we're gonna calculate it so we've got a probability of 150 and uh, between 150 and 165 equals 0 0.3580 now we know that 165 is the mean so you could do this extra step it's not necessary at this point but it's always a good one to have in mind because all you're going to do is calculator back so what we're going to do is we're going to go 150 minus 165 and then that's divided by 14 which gives me negative 1.071 now if for any reason you forget this equation remember that in your formula sheet this equation is given so you can actually quickly work out the z values uh, so that's all I've done here and this is going to be worth uh, an achieved achieved it is and moving on to the next question so the next question actually says find the probability that will travel more than 172 so once again we're going to draw our um, normal kind of graph here so 165 and then standard deviation was 14 was it yep and we're looking for greater than 172 which is everything that goes around here so I'm going to put that as a Z value first so I've got 172 take away 165 that's 7 7 divided by 14 is going to be 0 0.5 so if X is equal to should we use the right pen if X equals to that 0 is equal to uh, sorry Z is equal to 0 0.5 <clears throat> we're looking for x greater than 172 or probability of z greater than 0 0.5 so we're going to go into the calculator again don't know why i'm going to the calculator i could have probably done this in the tables real quickly uh what do we have to normal and cd lower is 172 upper is well we don't know what upper is and so this is where I kind of use this crazy number like you know how many ever that should really cover it anyway so when we solve this we're getting the probability is equal to 0 0.3085 and the grade for that is worth an achieved now the other way you could do this real quickly is I am going to show you guys um, but I think might be a little bit too small let's have a look all right here we go so the other way you could do this real quickly is go down to where it says 0 0.5 and you can see that it's 0 0.1915 uh, 0 0.1915 is the green area here 
And if I actually go in the calculator, I gotta go 0 0.5 0 .5 minus 0.1915, which is the green area, gives me 3085. Real, real quick way of doing that as well. All right, so that's what an achieved. Let's go to the next one. So the next one says, what do we got? We're gonna draw the bell curve. I always love drawing the curves because it just helps me visualize where I'm gonna be finding this number. Standard deviation is, we keep forgetting it, 14. So it says 10% of the time, Jeff is unsatisfied with how far one full battery chain, blah, blah, blah. So that means basically we've got this shaded part is actually 10%. So what we're gonna do is we need to figure out what the Z value is first and we're gonna do that first. So in your calculator, you're gonna go into menu, go into stat and I think having the Z, Z value is quite important because I'm just looking at it. But it looks like they've actually got answers straightforward, but let's just play it safe. Especially these are some of the older papers. So I'm gonna go into inverse. I'm looking at the left tail. The area is 0 0.1. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down standard deviation as zero and mean as one. This is not right. I think I know why. <laughs> I've got to put uh, standard deviation as one and mean as zero. Sorry, folks, getting late in the night. All right. So that's going to give me a Z value of negative 1.28156, whatever, 155. So let's go 156. Now let's just go 116. One Let's just keep that as the Z value right now. Now, in this case, what we can do is we can straightforward just substitute it. Like I'm, I'm kind of sh showing you guys both methods here. So I've figured out what the Z value is. And there's my equation. Sorry, I'm gonna go back to my equation. There is my equation. And I'm gonna use this equation to kind of figure out what um, what the x value is because remember z is equal to x minus the mean over standard deviation now z is negative 1.2816 equals x minus 165 divided by 14 cross multiply times 14 equals x minus 165 and then i am going to have to try and work this out in the calculator so I've got negative 1.2816 times 14 equals negative 17.9424. Uh, of course, bringing the x to the other side, it's going to become plus. So 165 take away 17.9424. And that's going to give me this answer here, which is 140. x is equal to 147. Point Oh, 06 kilometers now yes you could have just gone into stat mode and you could have gone distribution normal inverse and the left tail is 0.1 your standard deviation you could have put that as 14 minus 165 voila and you're pretty much done there now I want to show you guys the answer schedule there because if you look at this if you put down just the correct answer only, then you're actually gonna get um, just that, right? If you put down 147.06 with no working, then you're gonna actually end up with um, with just an achieved grade there. Now, if you look at the merit grade, it says correct minimum value obtained with working and or diagram. So you've gotta do one of the Either we're doing the diagram here or we're doing the working here. Um, but yeah, so we probably just wanna say that minimum distance is equal to 147.06 kilometers is, I mean, you could write the statement, the whole statement for Jeff to be satisfied. Minimum distance is 147.06 that his car will have to travel on one full battery charge, blah, blah, blah. You get what I'm trying to say. You basically take, this entire question here 
and just write that as a statement with the minimum distance 147.06. So as I mentioned to you before, the working out is necessary for this answer. If you just put the 147, that means you've done it directly from the um, graphics calculator, which means you're only going to get an achieved for it. But doing all the working is going to get you a merit. But here's the thing, the formula is given. All you have to do is just substitute the values and you're pretty much good to go for this question. Cool, let's go to the next one. So what we have for this question is 20% of the distance traveled on a full battery charge was less than 265. So we're going to draw this up. 20% is going to be the left tail here. So that's going to be 20%. And we've got 265. We don't know what the mean is, but we do know the standard deviation is equal to 14. So the question is asking calculate the mean distance. So again, we're going to find the Z value first. And remember that this area is 0 0.2. Now, if you had done the previous question, you kind of will look at this question and go, oh, so what do we do? We find the Z value and then put in the equation and you're done. That's that's all you have to do in this case, right? Because so that's what we're going to do. And that's why I like doing that method because you can pretty much see <clears throat> where um, what you're doing with your calculations. So we're going to go to 0 0.2. Standard deviation is 1 and mean is 0 because that's going to give me the Z value. So this gives me a Z value. So if I go probability of Z less than negative 0 0.8416 is equal to 0.2. Or in other words, if uh, X is equal to 265, then Z is equal to negative 0.8416. So Z equals X minus mean over standard deviation. Once again, remember that I got the formula from here. Just keeps coming back. I've got negative 0 0.8416 equals 265 minus the mean divided by standard deviation, which is 14. So cross multiply. I will also show you guys how to do this in the solver. So if you are kind of like, oh, I don't like to do algebra, um, there is a way to do this in the uh, in the solver as well. So let's do this one first. So we got negative 0.8416 times 14, negative 11.7824 equals, I'm going to bring the 265 to the other side so it's going to become minus 265 and minus 265 it's going to give me 276.8 and because both of those are negative so then I can say the mean is equal to 276.8 so grades wise we are looking at a E7 for this grade correct Z value used but mean is incorrect so if you f get the right Z value wow you get a so up to here you could actually get a merit right there correct Z value is achieved <clears throat> losing my voice so what else Z value correct Z values but or if you just find the Z value you could get an achieved as well I think I already talked about that before I started to lose my voice okay so that's this question go to the next one All right, folks, the first thing I'm going to be looking at for this question is trying to work out um, some comments about the center first, and then I'll do 
the spread and then the shape and so on so the first thing I want to do is I'm actually put all the frequencies <clears throat> for those um, number of cars there and then I'm going to work out the mean so let's do that first so as you guys can see there what I've done is I've actually taken the midpoints of these and multiplied it with its frequency um, that's what I did in that top line and then I've divided by 70 which gave me an answer of 274.4 so that's the the mean from this diagram here um, so my first comment is going to be means are similar because of normal distribution is 280 and then from the frequency is about 274.4 so it's kind of similar now for the next part you know we've got 47 percent of the data is less than 280 so how did i figure this out so if i look at the 280 basically i'm adding up all of these numbers so i've got one plus two plus four plus six plus eleven plus nine that's 33 so 33 out of 70 is actually less than uh 280 there so 33 out of 70 is 47 percent so i can kind of say that you know because normally you'd expect in fifth like if the median is actually 280 like what this person has actually said well mean is 280 then we can kind of say that the median is going to be if it's close to 280 then you're going to have like uh, less than 50 percent underneath 280 but in this case it's 47 percent so it's pretty close i'm going to get rid of that i've got one more comment to make but really this question is only asking for like two statements i mean you could use like um what I can see is inverse normal and compare I'm trying to figure out what that is but right now it's not <laughs> it's not hitting my head uh, but let's go through um, to the next bullet point which is going to be looking at the spread so looking at the spread um, we can say that the data has a, a range of 100 now it has a range of 100 because we've got 320 uh, let me just do this again so we've got 320 take away 220 which is the 100 uh, and then remember that um, from the mean if we go three standard deviations up and down we should cover 99% well majority of the data right so that's like six standard deviations so the way I got that 17 is by doing uh, 100 divided by 6 because three standard deviations up and three standard deviations down so that's approximately 17 which is actually quite large compared to the model standard deviation which in this case they gave was um, 14 right there so keep that in mind so that's the first bullet point and then uh, the second bullet point the second bullet point is we do have a standard deviation of 14 so if we actually go 280 plus 3 times 14 that's 322 while 220 the AT take away 3 times 14 it's going to give us 238 to 322 but if you look at the um, experiment we've actually gone from 220 to 320 um, so this particular model is actually kind of giving us a little bit less than what we're supposed to be getting and the next point that we can worth having a look at is the probability of um, X less than 50 now if sorry x less than 250 so x less than 250 when I did it on the experiment side I've got 7 that's actually less than 250 7 out of um, 70 which actually gives us a probability of 0 0.1 but if we go into distribution model and we say lower is going to be negative in whatever upper is going to be 250 standard deviation is going to be 14 mean is going to be 280 and what you actually end up getting is a probability of 0 0.016 um, so this <laughs> this probability is these two probabilities are completely different because I mean it's almost close to six times more or, or I guess the way we can kind of look at it is like in the experiment side there's more data on the left of 250 compared to um, the normal distribution so again kind of making a point that the spread has to be much greater 
And when it comes to the um, shape, folks, we can actually see that, um, you know, normal distribution, it's got to be symmetrical. But with this particular data, you can kind of see that there's a left left skew there. So it's kind of like getting pulled towards um, the left side. And it's not really bell shaped. Now you can kind of clearly see that the mean is not the same as the median or the mode. So definitely, you can't actually say that uh, normal distribution is actually valid for this. Another point that's actually worth making is um, definitely not unimodal because with normal distribution you def clearly will have like one peak and in this one you can kind of see like a few things that's actually happening here. Uh, the last point which I'm not going to write again is you could actually compare some probabilities as well. So you could actually um, look at what where uh, from that normal distribution um, you know how we did that 280 plus 3 I think it was 3 standard deviations was it? kind of lost my train of thought there um, so yeah you could actually um, calculate any probability and compare the skewness of the data as well so that's another thing you can do and I think we kind of have covered most things because um, you really need two valid comparative statements which we have done and uh, just gonna finish off the question now okay so just adding a couple of um, points right there to kind of finish this question off in the green box I've just kind of um, kept it open here because um, you can actually have um, two different decisions like you might actually say this claim can be justified um, so if you feel that oh, okay for example like the mean seems close but the standard deviation does not match the claim so you can actually say that it's um, so you don't think that it's actually a fair claim um, if you think it's a fair claim you might actually kind of come around and say um, what was the first thing that we did uh, so where the median and 47% of the data was is less than 280 so you can kind of justify it that way as well um, but the one thing that, um, that you can kind of uh, talk about is also the, where the, the test data was collected it was actually collected in urban areas so you have to keep in mind that uh, the manufacturer might have actually used um, data from the whole range of driving conditions um, and even though this particular figure is not very normal um, it could be possible that the manufacturer's claim is correct now I'm gonna be honest folks like I'm not the best at explaining these types of questions so if I do miss something just throw it in the comments um, like I mean you guys would have seen the amount of time it took me to actually to try and answer this question this was like almost a 25 minute question trying to explain it um, so yeah so if you do have like any kind of shortcuts for this we'd really appreciate it but apart from that I think this is question two we move on to the next one so question three part a part one what proportion of survey respondents own an EV and pH EV so EV is 275 pH EV is 145 and that's actually out of a 2000 so let's get rid of all of this okay so probability of EV or pH EV is going to be 420 divided by 2000 which equals to 0 0.21 All right, second question, what we have is, oh, sorry, I forgot to actually grade the questions. By the way, this question is actually worth and achieved. And I just realized that I hadn't actually um, given the grades for the previous one. Did I do the other one? Yes, I did. Um, let's just kind of go through this one real quickly. Uh, two valid comparative statements, different aspects, and clear explicit evaluation, blah, 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 blah. Yep, so all of this is gonna get you an excellence. Um, if you don't have the green box, but you have two valid comparative statements with numbers, then you are looking at a merit. So two for a merit uh, with numbers, justification, so numerical justification, I guess. And then if uh, two of them achieved without any kind of, um, any kind of numbers, I guess that's what I would say. All right, so let's go to the next question. So apologies about that. 
So we've got uh, what type of vehicle owner PV, EV, EV, PHEV, or non-electric is more likely to have a home solar system according to the survey results. So I'm going to have to get rid of this for now. So firstly, looking at uh, EV, that's 104 people that have two have home systems or home solar out of out of 275. So I'm just going to write that down. So probability probability of solar among EV is going to be 104 over 275 then I've got probability of solar among PHEV which is going to be 45 out of 145 yep that looks all right and then finally probability of solar among non EV so that's going to be 205 out of 1580 So I'm just going to work out um, what's the probabilities for each one of these things and then I should be able to compare it. So I've got 104 over 275 which is 0 0.3782, 45 out of 145 which is 0 0.3103 uh, and then I've got 205 divided by 1580 which is 0 0.1297. So, uh, which are more likely to have a home solar system? Uh, we're looking at EV owners because their probability is much more higher. So we can kind of say EV owners are more likely to have a, a home solar system. home solar system than PHEV and non or non non electric car owners cool so grades wise all three probabilities correct with conclusion is going to get you a merit one correct probability is going to be achieved so it could be either this this or this to get an achieved all right next question okay so for this question here we've got to look at mm, estimate how many of the home solar system owners in New Zealand so we've got to use the results from the table itself so how many home solar system owners also have EVs so for this one, we've actually got 354 home solar um, system owners and 104 of them uh, own an EV. So we're going to do that as a, prob as a probability first. So we're going to have probability of EV among uh, solar owners. That was 104 out of 354 104 out of 354 is going to give us 0 0.293738 so we can kind of say that if that's the case and if there was 22,144 home solar system set done in New Zealand we can say that 0 0.2938 or 29.38% um, um, I'm not gonna write this hang on let me just sorry I should have said uh, we would expect 
29.38 system 38% of uh, home solar uh, to have EVs if these results are valid in New Zealand so with that in mind we've got to work out what 29.38 of 22144 is uh, so that's multiplied by 22144 that's giving me about 6505.6 um, and I think you are allowed 6506 people there we go so 6506 people would have EVs except any yep that's all good except any whole number between 6422 and 6510 wow that's a big range um okay so grades wise here, let's see oh it's one of these double questions actually so let's just get rid of this part of it first correct probability of ev given solar found that's achieved there correct expected rounded value and oh wow okay so there's an end to this so we've got to do part four part four actually says give at least one statistical reason why in your answer to part three may not be valid to estimate in this case i mean there's so many things you can kind of uh talk about um let me just write a couple of bullet points so the two um kind of main ones we can talk about is the sampling method you know for example this was an online survey um, of course you wouldn't really use US results to New Zealand because it might not be valid they might have like different deals and so on and will have different deals um, so you know it, it doesn't actually make sense to use that data to actually to kind of um, look for what's the expected value for New Zealand so in saying that um, I think merit is you've got to give this number the expected number and you've got to give um, one reason from here to get a merit right next question okay I was kind of expecting a complex question but it, this is just a fill, fill the table question so let's look at the EV one so we're gonna go 225 minus 162 that's gonna give me 63 here and then I've got two no hang on 96 take away 23 let's do that one first that's gonna be 73 um, then I'm looking at this one here which is 271 take away 23 take away 63 which is 185 then I'm looking at this one here which is 1200 minus 96 minus 225 which is 879 and then 879 take away 185 694 it almost feels like one of those little puzzles that you just have to kind of go through and work it out plus 73 plus 162 that's going to give me 929 now in this question the probability is asking for uh, home solar and we also have to say among non-electric so if you look at the number of non-electric people that we've had is 879 and 185 has got home solar so 185 divided by 879 that's going to give us 0 0.2105 lovely grade of achieved so late in the paper to get an achieved question like this is uh, it's a gimme there. All right, next part of this question. Okay, so for this question, what we've got to do is um, I had to bring the other table up. Um, I was trying to kind of maneuver it there, but like I'm, I'm going to need the data for Europe as well. So first off, having a look at North America, EV owners are three times more likely to have home solar as non-EV owners. So that's the first part that I'm going to try and do here so first off in the US oh, actually I should say in North America 
So the first probability I'm look, going to be looking for is solar among uh, EV owners. And that's going to be 104 out of 275. Because if you look at it, 275 is a total number of EV owners. And then 104 of them own home solar. Actually, I might actually leave that here for now. Then we're going to look at probability of solar among non-EV owners. So non-EV owners, that's going to be at 1,580. So it's going to be 205 out of 1,005, sorry, 1,580. So work out both probabilities, uh, 104. That's 0 0.3782. And this is 0 0.1297. So if you have a look at the relative risk, we're going to get 0 0.3782 divided by 0 0.1297. 0.3782 divided by 0.1297 and this is going to give us a relative risk of 2.92 okay so this is uh, going to be our first statement here so what we're going to do is we've got 2.92 so I'm just going to write this statement down first now just remember folks like in the original part it actually said um, a North America it's actually three times as likely um, but for us we actually figured out that the relative risk is 2.92 so we can say 2.92 times as likely for EV owners to have a solar than non EV owners in America so again kind of pointing out that this is close but slightly under three times as likely now the Europe one was 30% uh, only 30% more likely so we've got to repeat the process but we're gonna do it with the European numbers there so we've got in Europe uh, probability of solar among EV. What do we have? We have 225 and 63. So the 63 is from there and the 225 is from there and whatever that probability is. So we got 63 out of 225, which is 0 0.28. Then we've got probability of solar among non-EV, which is 879 and 185. Again, that's from there. 879 being the non-EV owners, and then 185 owning solar. That's going to give me 0 0.2105. Yep. And if we work out the relative risk, 0 0.28 divided by 0 0.2105. That's going to give us about 1.33, 1 0.3301, um, which is, you know, if you think about 1.33, that's about 33% more likely. Now, if you're wondering how I got 1.33 as 33%, because remember, um, like 1.15 is 15% more for GST. So if it's 1.33, it's 33% more. Uh, so that's all it is and once again we're gonna have to write a little statement so with this one again we're just gonna make a quick little statement but before that having a look here for e EV owners in Europe it was only like 30% more but our relative risk actually popped up with 33% more likely so we can say that you know this is this is actually close to a claim of 30% now, as for um, the validity of these um, statements there, I mean, you can kind of go two ways in this. 
um, I guess the first thing could be like you know the 2.91 is actually less than three for America and um, also you know you could actually go on about like how online surveys they not really represent they, they might mean they might not be the best representation of the whole population um, you know because with online surveys there's only a certain amount of people that actually participate in it so that's something to keep in mind um, so I would just kind of finish off with a discussion about that now this whole online survey just keeps keeps coming back and I think if you ever see any kind of online surveys that you just gotta kind of put that in there um, and say how it, it there is a bit of a participation bias on that um, and also we're looking at the values again you know you could be pedantic and say that 33% more likely um, you know it's actually more than what because in the other in this statement they said only 30 percent but you've actually figured out that it was 33 percent so it's actually higher than 30 so you could have actually claimed that this is not valid as well so there's a couple of things that you can do so i'm just going to put a, a little green box here um where you kind of you can kind of write your own perspectives of um uh, how close those uh, relative risks were and whether you agree with them or not so grades wise we are looking at well there's, a, there's again a lot of things happening here so first off achieved is one european probability correct so that is achieved for this and this one relative risk of 10 correctly is a merit so you could get a merit for this one this value here or this value uh, for E7 calculates both so for E7 you need two times the relative risk and makes decision on validity of claims so you're making a decision here and here uh, for E8 you're actually doing the stuff in the green box so yeah, I think that's Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this uh, paper here. So, anyway, guys, look, um, that was a pretty late night one for me. But um, if you have any feedback on this uh, paper, yeah, please feel free to write some comments in there. Um, I'm like I said, this is all new to me. I'm still kind of I love I love the normal distribution probability tree questions, but when it comes to like. Um, the explanation of those word questions god like i just i struggle with it but it's like you know what i'm sure you some of you might be doing a better job with that explaining it i think explaining it is a lot easier than to write it like i hate writing i'm not going to lie about it um so you know that's something that you have to work through and figure it out on your own and how you're going to write those answers um but anyway just wanted to kind of wish you guys uh, best of luck for your exams hey guys that is basically it for this video as always don't forget to like this video share this video and of course subscribe to keep up with the latest content uh, there should be some playlists popping up check them out great revision material and as always thank you for watching